I want to greet everyone a very good morning. And Christmas Day morning is always wonderful, filled with you know, children extra happy because they open their presents. They wake up extra early to open presents. Well, we're glad they can join us uh, here. Usually they're all upstairs. And you know, just to be able to be together again is in itself a joy. I think this is, I, I just received a whole long list of people who are down with COVID. So they are not able to be here, but they all come online. So they are tuning in online. So this worship service is both physical and virtual. And those who are, this is what, COVID has taught us too. It has made us more creative. So we will use online facilities and we will lock down, open, lock down, open, lock down. Oh, let's, let's do it online. So now we still have the online streaming service for those who are unable to be here, down with COVID and, and all. But you know, we don't lose the joy of celebrating Christmas. That is what matters. Okay, so I just want to send greetings out to everybody on behalf of our friends and, and, and people, our brethren overseas as well. From Singapore, Bethany side, they're just happy that they can be back in the Shangri-La. They have a thousand people to gather there for worship, Christmas Day worship. And they are just glad. After three years of unable to, they are happy that they can be uh, there again together. So they send greetings, all the pastors there. I bring greetings over from India as well. And later on, I want to show you some photographs from Pastor Stephen James, and just to update everybody on the work that he is doing. And that is really exciting. All right, from Burma as well, and um, uh, we have people there, and, and they just want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. And, you know, just... This is the relationship that we don't take for granted and that we're just remembered. That must add to our joy too. Now, I want to show you some photographs, uh, in particular, Pastor Stephen James. You may not know him personally, but he's one of our pastors over in India, southern India, in a state called Tamil Nadu. And Tamil Nadu is a big state. Uh, we have churches in Chennai area, two churches, Jayam and Satyam. And, uh, but Pastor Stephen De James Church is uh, over in Trichy, Visuvasam Church. Now, this is Pastor Stephen James and uh, the family member. I just thought, show his photograph, so at least you have, a, you have a face to who I'm talking about, right? And we have, this is his family, one daughter, now, when I last saw her, she was not that tall. Yeah. Each year before the pandemic, we would go over to India and have church camps. I've seen the little girl grow, and now she is you know, t almost taller than the mummy now. And, and, and a wonderful family. Now, just to, this is the family, and he is committed to the church over in Visuvasam. Now, today, they're going to have 400 people gather for worship. And he's just looking forward to it and sharing with people the gospel. And they share with people the gospel in very, very practical ways. Well, I'm glad, we're very, very glad. And they learn to care for the poor. And, and so, the, each one who come that are, they know that are struggling. And these are often people with disability. You know, in Australia, we have a lot of benefits. There are you know, people who take care of people with disability. You know, you've got special you know, support from the government and so and so forth. I think we take so much for granted, not in India. If the family is unable to take care of them, they, nobody takes care of them. Well, this is where we have what we call Operation Good Samaritan, where we buy basics like rice, oil, whatever it is, 
to give to whoever comes for help, Christian or non-Christian, it doesn't matter to us. It is to help people who are in need. Now, this is the work that he does. Just let me show you the picture over here. Now, this to me is personally exciting because this work is not in Trichy. This is seven hours away. It is in another state called Bangalore. And he commutes seven hours every fortnight to, to this place. It started off with a young person that came for our ch church camp. Now, I was there. Now, after the church camp is over, you know, this person said, you know, I was actually contemplating ending my life. He was so depressed. He said, after the church camp, I found some hope in the message of the gospel, in the, the Jesus that you are talking about. And he went back to Bangalore. Now, several years later, he says, I'm bringing some of my friends. Whatever I heard, I went to tell my friends. And suddenly, from one person to 50, from 50 to 100. So this is a group of young people that is brought by this young man. So Pastor Stephen James go over there every fortnight to do Bible study with them, and then he drives back. Seven hours both ways. I drive to Albany. I... Uh, uh, <laughs> I, let's go, not go there too often. But this is seven hours. That to me is amazing. So I wrote back and said, Pastor Stephen James, you are a great example to me. And that is wonderful to see. So they, they are, and they're just happy. You know, they don't have clothes like that. All these are nice new clothes given to them on Christmas. And they receive something like that. They are just so glad and they will wear it, they will do special items with it, perform, and, and there they are. The small group over there, they, are, they learn to sing. You, know, you look at their circumstances in life, nothing to sing about. No joy to sing about. Oh, find faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is now a special reason to sing. Oh, there they are. And they're very creative in decorating the place. This is not the church. This is a hired hall. They, we don't have a church right now there. This is a new work. We're looking for a place for them. Buying the land as usual. This is what we do. Buy the place, help build the place, and then uh, support the work that is to be done there. Right? So this is an update. Any, any other photographs to see? Good. Well, thank you. Just want to update everybody because I know you have been asking. The, the previous week, I showed photos of uh, buildings and the work there, and someone asked, can we see people? Can we see faces? So I thought Christmas Day will just show you uh, the people that are there, the work that is being done. Well, this Christmas, let everything add to the joy. Don't let the things, the problems, take away the joy. Count your blessing, not your woes. And you begin to realize, wow, there is much to thank the Lord for. Well, both my parents uh, both have COVID. They're not here. Right? And mom got COVID right on Christmas Eve. Dad, of course, will get. So I called mom up to encourage her and, and said, mom, who knows? Well, I had a same, very similar experience. I had COVID right on my birthday. Cancelled the, you know, the, the birthday dinner, I had a dinner planned and all the things right on my birthday, on the day I tested. It was a very, you know, people ask me, how was your birthday this year? I'll tell them, it was a positive experience. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. So there we go. I say, mom, it's all right. Who knows? Maybe you got some... And now inside you, you travel. They're going to be traveling in Malaysia in Jan and then go Japan, go here, go there. Maybe, who knows? Better to catch it at home. Yeah, than to catch somewhere. And then can't help. it will be challenging. Count your blessing. This Christmas, let's again go back to you know, all that we have. Cherish it. Well, thank God the little ones are here. They are precious. Right? Later on, we can have fellowship. Thank God for that too. Okay?
Well, we're going to prepare our hearts for worship. We're going to have Tim over there, and he is going to play for us a prelude, and this is to help us to prepare our hearts and our mind, you know, as much as we acknowledge the presence of so many here. And every time we come to the house of God, our heart, our mind, we acknowledge that invisible presence of the Lord Himself. And that's what the prelude is there to help us all do, children and adults and all of us. Okay, and, and this morning we'll come back and later on I will be leading in worship with you, with, with uh, uh, two of our uh, team members who lead the children worship as well. I look forward to that. Well, this morning we have a special segment where we will receive new members into our church. But before we do that, we're going to have the worship part where we sing Christmas carols, and then we're going to have uh, the, the team here who's going to lead us as well. And I'm part of that team because one of the team members got COVID, and that's Enoch, and most likely he will be watching online. Enoch is a school teacher, and he is the right man for the job. He, he works at a school, very rough kids, very rough background, and Enoch is a big fellow, so very well respected. But big fellow or not, COVID have no respect for anybody. <laughs> They're going to hit you. <laughs> They're going to hit you. So we, of course, wish Enoch get well soon. But I'm going to have Melanie and uh, Hannah, come on over, and they're going to lead some of the singing of Christmas carol together with me. Now, you have this bulletin. There are a few things that I hear. You have a, this part is called Christmas Testimonies. Take time to read it later on. There's a bulletin to keep us all informed. Now, just to send out a word of apology. Now, if you went on our website and you say worship is at 10 a.m., we are so sorry. We have changed that, actually. We were worshipping at 10 a.m. for a while until we brought lunch back, and then we went back to 10.30. Okay, so we have to just make that amendment. Now, look, better early than late. So you were here at 10 a.m.? Congratulations. Keep coming at 10 a.m. Maybe we shouldn't change it. <laughs> right? Now, you have also this particular bulletin, 
which the Christmas carols are chosen here. Okay, so this is our first Christmas carol that we're going to sing together. Go tell it on the mountain is a very popular common. We hear it uh, maybe in Coles while you're shopping. We hear it in churches. But, you know, look at the words. Pay attention to the words carefully. And that is sometimes how we can discover something new. This is about the shepherds, poor, humble shepherds. And, and then they have a special song that they want to share. You know, what you must ask, what inspired them to sing? See, inspiration is both received and given. When a person is truly inspired, naturally it will come forth. It will come forth. You can't help yourself. Well, there are the shepherds. Poor as they are, challenging as their work can be, found great inspiration in the, the message the angel of God shared with them concerning the birth of the Savior in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this carol remembers them. The joy that is there, go tell it on the mountain. They went everywhere. So I think of Pastor Stephen James. Well, India, there are mountains too, you know. We have a work in Manipur, and they are up in the mountains area. So for some of them, it's quite literal, right? We don't have mountains in WA very much. We have some ranges, and, and, and that's it. Kings Park is not really a mountain. Right? Where did you just so happy you share it with other people? Now that is wonderful. Well, let's sing our first Christmas carol together. This Christmas, have you been inspired? Have you found inspiration? That is my challenge every Christmas, to find renewed inspiration. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us to never lose a sense of purpose and joy in life, in work, in ministry too. Okay, well, sing with me this beautiful Christmas carol, remembering the shepherds. And they were inspired, and they shared their inspiration. And this Christmas carol, go tell it on the mountain, and they told about the birth of the Lord everywhere they went. Let's sing this together.
Um, Merry Christmas. I'm Mel, and it's my joy to be up here leading you all in a time of worship this morning. A couple of weeks ago, I went on a trip to Italy with my two cousins, Kelly and Garrett. We had the best time eating endless amounts of pasta and seeing so many beautiful sights and buildings. For some of you who may not know me very well, I do not have a single artistic bone in my entire body. And being in Europe meant that we visited a lot of art galleries. Some may say if I had it my way, I'd be in and out of each gallery in less than 20 minutes. But thankfully, having Kelly and Garrett there, they made me slow down a little bit, and I'm glad that I did. Not only did Kelly tutor me on the meaning of fresco painting, which is basically a painting on the ceiling or a wall on top of plaster. And so in my mind, if it's a bumpy painting, it's a fresco painting. <laughs> but something else that I noticed as I made my way around the gallery looking at each painting um, that, was in, that was so evident in each piece. And it was the way the Lord Jesus was portrayed. So I've put some slides up if you want to have a look. In many cases, he was lined with a golden halo to signify his holiness and was illustrated in a way that showed his gentleness, compassion, and strength. Though many paintings in the galleries illustrated his death and suffering, there were also many paintings of his birth. And each painting was created with such detail and brought the nativity story long foretold truly to life. Seeing the Lord Jesus illustrated in all these paintings this way, oozing with strength, compassion, and his love, reminded me of the strength and comfort he has given to me throughout this whole year. At times, my work can be a little bit challenging with long hours, and I constantly feel pushed out of my comfort zone. And this meant sometimes it's tricky to meet everyone's expectations, whether that be my boss, my friends, my family, or even my own expectations. But it was God's strength that kept me trying and helped me to not give up when everything felt too much sometimes. In Isaiah 12, verse 1 to 2, if the kids and everyone can read it with me, 1, 2, 3. In that day you will say, O Lord, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. This is a verse that has stuck with me ever since Pastor Chris shared it with me, and it really sums up how the Lord too has been my strength and comfort in 2022. Our next song I'd like to share with everyone is my favourite Christmas carol, and it's called Mary's Boy Child. It sings of the entire nativity story, and throughout the chorus it echoes, and man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. And I hope that as we all sing this next song together, we are reminded of how all of our lives have been changed because of that one Christmas Day thousands of years ago. So let's sing. Inside, and by and by they found 
the room in a stable of a lord. And in the manger, cold and dark, Mary's little child was born. Trumpets sound and angels sing, listen to what they sing. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hannah, and like Pastor Chris introduced us, um, with Mel, I'm part of the junior worship team that lead the children in Sunday worship. And I am excited and thankful to be given this privilege, you know, to lead in worship with Mel on this very special day. And I am even more excited because everyone in junior worship is here with us in the sanctuary for our combined worship service. So in November and December, um, we did, in the ch children in the junior worship, we have been reading the Christmas story, but we're hearing how different people in the Bible um, find joy in the birth of the Lord Jesus. So we heard how Elizabeth and Mary and Zacharias, the shepherds and the wise men, you know, find joy. So I thought this morning I'll also share with you um, why I find joy this Christmas. So this year has not been easy. I think we all can relate to that. But you know what? Actually, every year is not easy. And it feels that challenges and problems are never ending. You know, once one's finished and you thought like, that's it, then the new one comes along. And sometimes I wonder, you know, with everything that's been going on, how come I still have joy and how come I can still smile? You know, and it's not something that I have to force out. But, you know, I know that it's because of Christmas. You know, this very special day when the Lord fulfilled his promise to be with us through the birth of the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, who's also called Emmanuel, which literally means God with us. You know, when I was drowning in sin and, you know, feel like I'm lost and have nowhere to go, the Lord Jesus saves me. When I feel weak and scared, the Lord Jesus gave me strength to press on. And when I feel down, um, burdened, burdened by the problems of life, the word of God always brings comfort. And, you know, having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing and believing that God is with me makes all the difference. And what makes faith in God even more special is because this joy of Emmanuel, the joy that having God with us, you know, extends to the joy in belonging to the household of God. As the Bible said in Ephesians 2.19, you know, we are no longer strangers and foreigners, but we are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. And look forward, you know, look to your left and right, look back. You know, there's people that you may know or people that are not as familiar to you, but among you are people who have experience how God has been their salvation. You know, how God has been their strength and their song. And I am very thankful that, you know, God brings us together here in Bethel today to celebrate Christmas together. You know, it is very amazing to have a fellowship where we can share um, in joy and in our faith um, in the Lord Jesus, and we can praise the Lord together for his salvation. And in Isaiah 12, we also read, you know, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his deed among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. The joy of Christmas is not just for today, it's for forever. And let us invite each other to give glory and to worship God together with joy and triumphantly. So I would like to invite all of you to stand up and sing um, our next Christmas song, Oh Come All You Faithful, before we listen to the message.
Well, I want to just thank those who led in worship, and you know, they are a wonderful group of young, they are not exactly young people, young professionals. And uh, Mel is an accountant and working hard over there and you know, over time and everything, and just to be able to find some joy here and there, that is special. Hannah is just received news that she has been accepted a university over in the Eastern State to study medicine. And she'll be taking leave from us here for a while and going over there to study. And she, she came over, she told me, I haven't told anybody, I haven't even told my mother, I just want to ask you whether it's all right to go. I said, of course, you go and do what you, want, you, you need to do. I know her heart is here. And that is always special when their heart, you, there is, you know, you, Home will always be where the heart is. And we you know, have every support to go and, and do your utmost and, and be, a, be a happy doctor, okay? Bring, bring some cheer. Doctors are not known to bring cheer. Is bearer of bad news, yes. Very few doctor is a bearer of good news. Bad news, you know, doctor calls you, no good. <laughs> All the time. And wow, well, she's got a... And she said, I've got good news to share. Good, share the, share the gospel wherever you can. Okay, well, now this part of the worship service is special too. We don't always get to have this, right? Moses and Daphne, come on over, uh, over here. And they were meant to be received into membership last week. And then guess what? <laughs> they got COVID together. <laughs> so there we go. So they do a lot of things together, husband and wife team. This is, they come for our seniors program. And they, they came to Bethel uh, last year, 2021, and they have stayed on and they have checked us out and they have you know, learned along the way and what they have written, what they d delight about being here. And they ask, can we be members of Bethel? And I'm glad for them. You know, not all the time you find husband and wife share in faith together in such a focused way. Usually one is stronger than the others. This is husband and wife. And so very, very glad for them uh, that they're going to come in together as members, new members of Bethel. Okay, well, I've got to switch on this mic. We're going to pray for them and receive them into membership. Can I ask you both to kneel? Come, yeah. Well, we're going to receive them in prayer. Moses, Daphne, I receive you into the membership, into Bethel, in the name of the Lord, Jesus himself, in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, we thank you for your precious gift of salvation. And we know that's only the beginning of a journey of faith, of relationship with you. We're glad that Moses and Daphne has found their way to Bethel. And we believe that it is your hand that would lead each and every one to form a community that will do your work here as well. And so we receive them with joy, with gladness as new members of Bethel. May they grow even further, even stronger, and may they be found to be faithful servants of yours till you receive them in glory. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Wow, this is husband <laughs> helping wife. Good. Not, not the other way around. Well, of course, we're going to help each other, husband and wife. This is a certificate. Uh, just to congratulate you. And all members of Bethel, we rise just to, as a uh, symbol or significance of receiving them into the fellowship. Okay, well, wow. good. 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 And their first task as new members, where do you begin? Many begin in the washroom. We begin serving the Lord humbly. It doesn't matter how old you are, what your status is outside. 
you serve the Lord humbly. Over in our church in Singapore, Bethany, we have a person who does traffic marshalling, you know, help people park cars. His day job is at one stage, he was the chief of army in Singapore. And there he's in church serving humble car park. So, but that created a lot of problem for us. Because when people in the army who recognized him drove into the car park, they had to salute. <laughs> and not so good to salute when you're driving. So there he is, while he's moved on to become a public servant, and we're just glad that he continues to carry the same humble spirit into wherever he is. Okay, well, this morning I bring you a Christmas message from a book in the Bible, the book of Isaiah, is not an easy book to actually read. Okay, but nonetheless... It can be a wonderful word when we seek to try and understand what this is all about. A really precious word. Actually, it is a very simple, straightforward word. It's always the question of whether we believe in it. You see, we all look for joy. We desire joy. We talk about finding joy. But the problem is, joy is not just something that we can obtain easily. It's actually the byproduct of what you have. The question is always, do you have the right things? Look at the children where they open the present. When they see the present, it's all wrapped up, you see? That's the excitement, it's all wrapped up. But when they open it, not what I want. The smile turns, you know, it, it reverses sadness. Right, this is not what I want. Uh, next present. Not what I want. Next present. Next. And it can be a mountain of things. Where do they end up? Given away. Unfortunately. See, same with us today. After a while, we don't even try. Can't find it. I want to suggest to us all, don't. Christmas is not same old, same old as a lot of people see it. It really isn't. And hence, we were looking, what can we you know, discover about the Lord Jesus further? What may we know further? And when we find, to me, the, the greatest gift you can ever receive is the gift of knowledge. It really is. And hence, Christmas present, I don't give chocolate. The people I give presents to, I go to the bookshop and I find that book for them. It takes hours, I must say. Easier to go to Coles and just rent, you know, get a chocolate somewhere. I find that book. It could be a Christian book. It could be other books. But what is it that could help obtain this so-called thing called joy? Knowledge. And one of the greatest knowledge that we can ever find, actually, is knowledge of God. Now, we're going to read Isaiah 43, and this is special because we have here a word that is spoken by God Himself to His people. This is a message from God to His people. Every year... I look forward to the Christmas message actually given by our late Queen Elizabeth. Of course, this year we have none. Last year was her last message, and every year for over 70 years of her reign, she has given over 66, seven counting Christmas messages. And she's able to give tie in. How can one person go back to the Christmas story and bring a relevant, real word, word for the present moment? And to me, as a well, I do public speaking and I study messages quite a bit. How does one bring such a word? And it is not easy. And the queen is able to just bring a sincere, true word from her heart to the people. All these years, I actually study her messages. So I look at this, 
And this is a privilege of the people called Israel, where they have God give a message to them. Now, take a look at this very, very carefully. What is this message? Right? It may not be directly to us, as in direct. It's the same. I, I listen to the Queen's message. I'm not from the UK. I'm not English. But as you look at it, this, the principles, the truth inspires. The truth helps us to face whatever challenges that is ahead. And that is what the Queen could do, which I absolutely respect. Now, here is a word, of course, even greater because it comes from God. The queen is but a human being, royal and all, still human. Now, here is a word to offer hope, to offer strength, to offer courage in unprecedented time for Israel too. Now, take a look at this. And we read in Isaiah 43, but now... Now, there is the phrase, but now will tell you this is present. The verse that was just flashed up by uh, Melanie, Isaiah 12, in that day you will say, that is about the future, right? That is to offer hope from, you know, from the Lord too. That is to offer hope for the future. And we all need a word that offers hope. But we also need a word for the present, the current problems we are all facing. What is the present? Hope and present, we need the both. Future and present, we need the both. Now, this is present. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Now, what is all this about? Right? Now, you may not uh, know this, but just to share with you what it means. It may not mean very much to us, but it matters a lot to this group of people called Israel. Now, every time you see two names mentioned like that, O Jacob, O Israel, actually it's the same person. They're not two different people. O Jacob is always a reminder of the past. Israel is what they have become. What God is saying is very profound just in addressing them. O Jacob, I created you, formed you, O Israel. Jacob was the birth name. And Jacob's past was not very, not very good one. He was a deceiver. He cheated his brother of his birthright. He began very humbly with nothing. He became Israel, triumph with God. So this word is very much a reminder of humble beginnings. Sometimes when we face current problems, we don't know what to do. Remember humble beginnings. That's the best thing to do. Right? Well, I, my, my son went to school and he came back and he told us that, that today I, we, I dropped my lunch. We ordered pizza and I dropped it on the floor. So I said, what did you do with it? Threw it in the bin. No more dirty, throw in the bin. So I told him the story of my father, his grandfather. This is called humble beginnings. So Aye had a very similar experience. And he went to school and he dropped his lunch. What did he do? He didn't throw in the bin, he ate it. Why? Because that was his only meal for the day. He did not have much at all. And sometimes I have to teach my children, share with uh, my children, because they see Aye as he is today, successful in his business and, and all that. But they don't know this about him. 
he had a humble beginning. He never finished primary school. He started work when he, 13 years old, go out to work. And he, very creative. You see, this is the working of a business person. And then he became successful. Of course, years down the road. How does a person succeed like that? Well, they were humble beginnings. We all have humble beginnings. Israel as a nation, now this is not talking about the person, it's actually talking about the people. And sometimes they have forgot their forefathers. They have forgot significant people in their lives that have humble beginnings. Don't forget them. This Christmas, take time to remind ourselves we began humbly too. We began with nothing. By God's grace, by God's mercy, we are where we are today. Should I not give thanks? Now, here's, go on further. Right? Now, this is a reminder and an important reminder of humble beginnings. Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. How did Israel become well, who they were? Israel as a person, Israel as a nation. I call this key relationships. You didn't succeed on your own. There were people in your life that helped you succeed. Now, in life, we're going to have many relationships, friendship, right? People you meet along the way, and some come, many go. And that's part of the reality of life. But there are key relationships that we must never forget. They helped you, and because of them, you succeeded. For Israel, it was God. God was there in the pits of Jacob's life. He had to run away from home because his brother wanted to kill him. He stole his brother's birthright. Guess what the big brother is going to do to you? And worst thing is, the big brother is a hunter. He's very good with his crossbows. Right? He will, he's going to shoot you. Whoa, they had to send him. Okay, uh, the mother said, go to my cousin's house. Go to my brother's house, sorry. And uh, go to Laban. And he had to go. Now, he's not very good at navigating he, all, all over the place, he didn't even know how to pitch a tent. He slept in the wilderness with a rock on his, as his pillow. What did he have dreams about? Rock and roll. Wow, life was hard. Well, quite literally too. He was in rock bottom. No, no puns. But in reality, that was where he was and God gave him a special vision that he's going to be there with him, for him, made these promises. I will be with you. I will help you. I'm your God. Now, he woke up. Now, it could be a dream. You know, it could be a nightmare. And he woke up and he said, this place, surely God is here. And he said, I will do all this, God, if you be my God then I will come back here and I will worship you. You will be my God. He named that place Bethel. The same name we call our church, House of God. This is nowhere. You come to this church and some of you say, what a beautiful building. And we are very grateful. should see our first building. We had a small little house church in 7, uh, not 7, 16 Mint Street. One toilet a fraction of this, but that's where we all began. We began with a few families. We bought this place years ago. You know, what was this place? They parked road trains. We bought it for half a million dollars, and we thought, whoa, that, that was a lot of money. We sold our church for half a million dollars, building and all, and we bought a land with nothing in it for half a million dollars. What do you do? You got no, nothing. You got a piece of land. Let's worship. Let's bring some chairs here and, and, and worship. You'll be in trouble. 
And so the Lord provided. The Lord sent people. There were key relationships in our lives that we don't forget that helped us. Today, we have a building where we can have so many things going for us. How can we not thank God? Key relationship. We are reminded humble beginnings. We go, key relationship. Oh, thank God. There he was. I called you. You are mine. Don't be afraid. I'm there to help you. I redeem you in this case. Now, right? Watch this, what God did for them. Verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Why? That's the promise that the Lord made to them. Don't be afraid. I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to be with you in and through the crisis. We all think of God as one who is almost like Santa Claus, you know. You know, I've been nice this year. Can I be on the good list? Can I have this? Can I have this? We think of God as Santa Claus. God is not Santa Claus. We think of whatever we do. Remove our problems. Take away our problems. That's not what God does. Here's something even better. He's going to be there with you all the way to face every problem in life. We think of problems as something we need to solve. Sure, try. You solve one problem, you create another problem. What's the solution for cancer? Chemo. It's going to create problems too, you know, for your health. And you begin to realize there is no perfect solution. What is God's answer? I'm going to be here with you. I am with you. Fear not. I will face every challenge with you. Well, that says a lot. Right? Look at that. That is called key relationship. Now, here's the third thing. And there are times we need this too in verse 4. Since you were precious in my sight. Now, this is what God is saying. You are precious in my sight. You have been honored, and I have loved you. Those are very, very special words, of course, to people who matters to you. Right? We look at the children. They are precious in our sight. And we love them, and we'll do anything for our children. We will be there with them through whatever trials and tribulation they're going to face. Well, talking about problems like this, this verse perhaps have hit me a little bit more harder this week. Yesterday, my daughter suddenly just passed out. She cut her little hand, her finger, and then right before my eyes, she fainted and she collapsed on the floor. I was talking to my cousin. Caleb was over. I was just talking. I saw that, and I literally dumped everything, and I dashed towards her, holding her, being there for her. Now, she recovered, of course. She's here this morning, and you know, she blanked out, totally unaware of what just happened. She was this close to the drawer handle. The hair clip she was wearing just smashed completely. Those jagged hair clips. So ladies, you wear all kinds of, you know, some wear chopsticks, please. <laughs> please. You know, you're wearing some very dangerous things on your head. You don't think about things like that. That just dawned on me. Why? Just be like the men. Some nothing to wear. So, you see, <laughs> nothing is good. So there we have it. Sometimes it's good. See, so there, smash, just whatever, be there until she gained some conscience. And then watch, called Nick up, said, Nick, not coming over. I've got to watch over Chrissy. I'm going to be here with her. She may have a coca, just got to watch. Of course, after a while, she's off again. She's happy. But the father's heart, when she dropped, my heart dropped too. 
That thing smashed, my heart smashed too. And that's how it is. Why you are precious in my sight? Why I love you? No matter how the world looks at you, it doesn't matter. It's how the father looks at his children. And this is what God says. And from time to time, we need to know how God sees us. These are words of reassurance. Jacob is not a very nice person. Israel did not become a great and wonderful group of people either. They had many flaws, many weaknesses. And yet God says to them, why would God do this? One, you are precious in my sight. Two, I have, you have been honored. Three, I have loved you. That's it. And to me, that matters so much. Every Christmas, I remind ourselves, we remind ourselves, where did we begin? And when we see others succeed, we know it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Success never comes with ease. And a new generation needs to learn it because they have everything given to them, everything handed to them. Hence, we remind Jacob, that's what, we, what you used to be. You are Israel. Treasure that relationship with God. Their key relationship that is there. Don't neglect them. Don't set them aside. And here is a word of reassurance. Now, how do we apply these all together? This is the knowledge part. What I've just presented to you is just the knowledge part. How does it really work in real life? Three things, right? Three things found here. This is go on further. Now, here's the word. Fear not, again repeated. Verse 5. He's already said this. Verse 1, fear not, I have redeemed you. Verse 5, again, fear not, I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east. You see, we all struggle with this. And this thing is called faith. We may have knowledge, but not faith. Right? Find that faith. We may know, but whether you believe in it, much depends. How do you know there is no faith there? Very simple. A lot of fears are still there. Fear not. Fear not. If the God who created you said, I'm here with you, I have redeemed you, I have there for you, I have done this for you, and still there are fears, how can there be faith? Find that faith. Now, that's the first part. We all need to find, sometimes people find faith in times of crisis. But not all the time. Sometimes people find faith because they were inspired by other people's faith. Hence, we get you to read stories of their lives. Some find faith because they, along the way, they just like what they see, and some find it very, very quick. Some take a long time. Much depends on you. Everybody's different. But find that faith. Now, that's the first. Number two, use that faith. If you find that faith and don't use it, what, the, what, the, what good it is? What good is it? Use it. Now, watch this of using faith. Fear not, I am with you. Use that faith to focus on the Lord. That's focus. So some may have faith, but not very focused. To all over the place. The pro moment problem comes. They get distracted. They lose focus. Right? As you go through the water, I'm there with you. As you go through the fire, river, I'm there with you. Focus. So every time I go through challenges, personal, I focus. Early this year, I went through a crisis, personal health crisis. I lost my voice completely. Very weak. If I were to speak further, I would 
damage it. I developed a polyp in my vocal cords. Went for surgery. It took months. Now, for a person whose occupation is not public speaking, you're fine. But if your sole work is speaking, for me as pastor, I speak every week, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. That will end your entire livelihood. That would end your calling. That would end everything. To me, that's worse than death. Imagine your entire life now is over. Your work life is over. You can never speak again. I needed to find this faith. Focus. Focus on the Lord. Focus on who He is. He's with me. I'm not going to be afraid. He is with me. Focus. I use my faith to focus. Number three, I use my faith to fulfill what God has called me to do. And it takes faith. If God has called a person, He Himself will see it through. Now, watch this very carefully. Right? One, God knows our greatest fears. Their fear was their descendants. I think that's our fear to our children. And so God says to them, you don't be afraid. I will bring your descendants from the east, gather them from the west. I'll be there for your children too. I think for most parents, our concern is when we, when we die, we, we can't be, we, if we're here, we can be there for our children. But what if one day we cannot be there for our children? Who's going to be there for our children? The Lord knows our deepest fear. And He answers it, I will do it. I will bring them home. They may be lost out there from the east, from the west. I will bring them back. See, that's why we need focus. And here is a word. We need to find that focus. Verse 7, everyone who is called by my name. Called whom I have created for my glory. Now, there is a word that to me is most special to see. There is something we are to fulfill. God had a glorious plan for Israel as a people. God has a plan for individuals. God has a plan for nations. God has a plan for the church too. What is that plan? We are to actually use that faith to discover God, to understand His plan, and to fulfill that plan. That was what was given to them. Called by my name, Israel. The word Israel is literally triumph with God. You are literally called by my name. You are created for my glory. That is God's plan. So who knows what kind of Dr. Hannah will be? Dr. Hannah, too soon, too soon. Who knows but created for my glory? Bear that in mind as you go over to the eastern states. Right? Who knows what Melanie would be outside in the church? Who knows? Bear this in mind. Called, created for my glory. Now, the last part of it is how do we know this is all real? Here's the final word. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. This is called confirmation. When you see God working, shaping you, forming you, you can be sure it's there. It's called the confirmation. The calling is just a calling. Calling is called an invitation. Come, be part of this work. Do you want to be? Do you want to learn? It's challenging, you know. Do you want to do it? Now, created, God will be involved. Confirmation, He will be there, formed and shaped. And the challenge this Christmas is to all of us who are parents, 
we look at our little ones, they are precious in our sight. Do more than give them Christmas gifts. Do more than that. Of course, we're going to be there for them, every sense of the word. Right? Seek, bring them to the one who is their creator. Bring them to the one who is their redeemer. They will outlive us in most cases. Entrust them to the Lord. That would be the wisest and best thing to do. Of course, for the little ones, for them, they were not going to hear and understand every single word, or if anything, they understand a word that has just been spoken. But if nothing else, the whole experience of how the Word of God is shared, may it begin as a small seed in their heart. That's how it always begins with faith. Small, and then it grows, and then it becomes established, and then we see the product of it all. And may that bring much joy to our heart and our mind. Right? Find that faith. Use that faith to focus on the Lord. Use that faith to fulfill what God has planned for us. Don't waste this life. Don't let it just go like this. We have been given so much from nothing to where we are. One life, make it count. The Lord Jesus Christ, in which every Christmas we celebrate, is our greatest example. He made that one life count for the glory of God. May we do so too. Let's pray together. Our Father, we pray this morning that we would find faith. We would use whatever knowledge that we can acquire, given, shared, perhaps through experience, perhaps through our own private suffering, learn knowledge, help us to use it to find real faith in you, and to use that faith to focus and not allow fear to get the better of us, and to use that faith to fulfill a great destiny to everyone who is called by your name, created for your glory. Help us to find that special faith this Christmas, or to rediscover it all over again. And we ask that you would bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to conclude the worship part of it. We're going to sing one last Christmas carol together, and then we're going to take a bit of time to prepare, of course, for fellowship lunch. You know, I just thank God for all the young ones in our church. We don't have this big premises. We don't hire anyone to clean. We don't have people on payroll, nobody, except me. Seriously. But how, I, I don't clean. I don't look after the entire church. How is that possible? We have the team of the young people that you see. They, they come and lead. And then after you've all eaten your field, they stay back and clean the toilets, they mop the floors, they do all that. Not because I tell them to. They have learned. As God is, they understand, this is what God say, precious, you have honored love to us. We look at God, you are precious. We love Him. We honor Him. Otherwise, we will never do what we do. As in never. Why will we do this? You don't pay a cent for lunch. It's all given. You come, you eat, you have a wonderful time. Why do we ask her, why do we do this year after year after year? Why? We look at the Lord. That's our focus. Precious in our sight. Love for Him. Honored. Because as we have received love and honor, we look to Him with love and honor too. And we look at our young people over here serving at the back in the AVA, over to the musician, leading the children, back in the kitchen, right? Our dean is considered a young person because the people who are preparing your lunch 
uh, some of them a whole are uh, in the seniors. And then a new team came in because the present team all down with COVID. And I want to say this to all of them, every single one of them, you are precious in all our sight and we thank God for you. So even as we sing together, we see the reality of God, we see the reality of faith in lives, form created truly for His glory. I'm going to invite those who led with me in, in singing to come on back. And let us truly sing this with all our heart. We have every reason to be thankful, to rejoice, to give thanks, and with every sense of the word, joy to the world. Okay, I'm going to ask you to stand as we sing one last Christmas carol together, joy to the world. you to remain standing. We're going to ask the Lord to bless us. We're going to be praying for you, be giving to you what is called a benediction, which is a prayer of blessing. And now may this great God of ours, to whom truly be glory, who called us by name, created us for His glory, bless our hearts this morning. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and His wonderful work as our Savior touch our hearts deeply all over again, that we can be created for the Lord's glory as a new creation in Christ. May the Spirit of God fill our hearts and our mind to find this faith afresh, and to use this faith to focus on the Lord through every challenges we face, and to use this faith to fulfill that great plan God has planned for us. And may the Lord Himself be glory truly, honor as He deserves in every sense of the word. May His name be blessed. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to have the post lute played by Tim. And then shortly, I'm going to come back up here and we're going to say grace together for lunch. And I will give you some in, in, um, in, uh, information on how lunch is going to work shortly. Okay?